Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of a very interesting star system somewhere out there. The star system that has six very unique planets with an extremely interesting pattern of orbit around the star. The pattern that we usually refer to as orbital resonance, but in this particular case the resonance is very unique, something that we've never seen before. And so let's discuss this discovery in a little bit more detail, but also talk about resonances in general. And let's start this with a bit of a history trip into early astronomy. Back in the days, here we're talking about hundreds of years ago, the early astronomers realized that there was actually a bit of a pattern to the placement of planets in the solar system. So here, for example, if we were to take a look at the distance of Mercury from the Sun and then multiply it by 2, we would roughly get the orbit of Venus, then multiply this by roughly around 2, and you get the orbit of Earth, then you get orbit of Mars, and then there's an unusual gap. And following this gap, you get the orbit of Jupiter, followed by the orbit of Saturn. And back in the days, this is actually how Uranus was discovered as well. Because of this unusual prediction, scientists estimated that there was actually another planet somewhere out there. But this pattern obviously doesn't work with Neptune and with anything past Neptune. However, interestingly, because of this pattern, the scientists were also able to discover Ceres and a lot of other objects we refer to as asteroids in the asteroid belt. They initially thought that this was a missing planet, but we now understand that this is not a planet and we also know that the asteroid belt might actually be a remnant from the early formation of the solar system, but because of the influences from Jupiter, it never really became a planet at all. Nevertheless, there is a strange pattern and a strange correlation with distances away from the Sun, and to some extent this can be maybe used to determine certain other patterns in other star systems. The one in the solar system actually has a name and I made a video about this a few years ago. It's known as this law right here. And it is accurate to some extent, but obviously has a few exceptions that don't really make any sense, like the orbits of Neptune and of course the orbit of Pluto and other objects. But when it comes to orbital patterns, we know that there is something called orbital resonance. And the best example of this is right here in the solar system around Jupiter. The first three moons of Jupiter form an exact orbital pattern of 4, 2 and 1. In other words, for every four orbits of Io, Europa is going to make two orbits and Ganymede is going to make one orbit. And these orbital resonances have actually been detected in many different places and also do play a very important role in our understanding of the formation of various systems. Today we think that, or at least we believe that, they usually develop as the material orbiting something moves closer and closer to that object and the material itself stabilizes the overall mass of all of these objects to form these patterns in order not to disrupt anything else in the system. In other words, this is a stable formation of an orbital system as it sort of reshuffles around some sort of a central object. And it's possible that this is exactly what happened in the solar system with these various patterns we're observing, but in this case Jupiter, because of its sheer mass, is also able to disrupt certain patterns and actually does influence and change the solar system over a period of billions of years. But because we know these resonances exist and because we know they're very important for the stability of a system, discovering these patterns in other star systems, such as the famous TRAPPIST-1, helps us understand whether there are any other potential hidden objects in this particular system and also helps us understand how these systems evolve. Now in TRAPPIST-1, the resonance is also there, but it's actually a lot more complex with relatively complex ratios forming between the orbits of these planets. Although overall, these ratios are extremely close to one and a half. Which means that for every three orbits of the closer planet, the more distant planet is going to do two orbits. And this is a really important resonance because first of all, it's extremely common. Second of all, it usually shows us that this particular star system is relatively stable, but because of the deviations in these patterns, it also allows us to discover other massive objects. Which is why it's really important to analyze this particular system located around 88 light years away from us, where six different planets form a very, very interesting and extremely precise orbital resonance that actually can help us explain a lot of things about the star system, but also help us understand how to analyze other star systems as well. So in this particular case, we have an interesting star, very similar to our own Sun, where six planets seem to be orbiting extremely close to the star itself. With each of these planets being defined as a kind of a super Earth or some kind of a Neptune like object, but in this case, really hot super Earth and really hot Neptune planets. 
Based on the masses and the sizes of these planets, the estimates so far suggest that about 5 of them are essentially these Neptune-like worlds, and possibly one is a super-Earth. With the smallest planet being about 2.2 masses of planet Earth, and the largest one being more massive than Neptune itself. In other words, even though the star in the system is similar to the Sun, everything else here is extremely different from any other system we've observed so far. All of the planets here are really, really close to the star. The orbit of the closest planet here is only about 2.17 days long. And that makes this planet extremely hot, obviously. But what's interesting though is that if you were to multiply that value by 1.5, you would get the orbital period of the next planet. Do this again, and you get the third planet, and then the fourth planet, and then the fifth, and the sixth. And that's where things become really interesting, because the orbital resonance of 3 to 2 applies to each of these six planets, with the last planet having an orbital period of about 17 and a half days. Now that's obviously about four times closer to the star than Mercury is to the Sun, which makes each of these planets extremely, extremely hot, especially if they have thick atmospheres. But because of this unusual 3 to 2 resonance amongst all of the planets, it also obviously creates extremely stable system that's going to stay stable for possibly billions of years, until I guess these planets evaporate completely. And you can kind of see that even in this simulation, their atmospheres are evaporating extremely fast, which also suggests that only the core of these planets is going to remain in the next few billions of years. But just like with the other resonances, um, this also means that a lot of these planets probably formed somewhere on the outskirts of the star system and slowly migrated toward the star, where they eventually settled on these very, very specific and very stable patterns. Today we believe that this usually happens as the planetary system where the planets develop interacts with the remnant of the gas in the disk itself, pictures of which we have from many different young star systems out there, like this one right here known as HL Tauri. And so as the planets migrate through the disk and as they essentially come closer and closer to the star because of the interaction with all of this dust here, they eventually stabilize in certain orbital patterns similar to the ones we observed in systems like TRAPPIST-1 and Kepler-80. But in this particular case, none of these resonances are perfect. In most cases, they have slight deviations from the usual 3 to 2 or 2 to 1 resonance. And this can be actually explained by all sorts of different instabilities introduced into the star system as all of this gas dissipates and the actual planetary system is born. And so because of these imperfections in the orbital resonance, we can actually use this to try to determine the initial mass of the protoplanetary disk from which this particular star system was born. And if we're able to do it for this particular star system, this in turn can help us analyze our own solar system and thus discover what the protoplanetary disk of the Sun looked like. In other words, it can help us see the history of the solar system if we can actually figure out how all of this works in other star systems as well. At the same time, these inaccuracies in resonance kind of point at various mass discrepancies and of course composition and mass of each of these planets. So in that way we can also use these patterns to try to analyze what all of these planets have on the inside. But all of this is of course in the future. For now all we know is that this interesting star system, at least for now, seems to be the only system out there with the most perfect resonance of all of the objects out there with the orbital resonance between each of the planets being almost exactly 1.5. So once again, for every three orbits of the closer planet, the farther planet is going to orbit twice. And because this applies to each of the six planets here, this actually makes this an extremely interesting star system to study, and also an extremely valuable source in learning how star systems and of course solar system developed over time and progressed from being just a cloud to then being a disk with protoplanetary objects to then eventually becoming a star system with planets in a very specific region. And because so far we only have a few star systems out there that we know of that have more than five planets in them, including TRAPPIST-1, Kepler-80, and now HD-158259, and every one of these planets seems to possess some sort of a resonance, it's also important for us to learn how these resonances influence planets in order for us to be able to discover other planets much easier. Which is, by the way, how one of the planets here was discovered to begin with. By looking at these patterns, the scientists realized that there was another object hiding in the data. 
And so once we figure out how these patterns work, and more specifically, what type of a pattern to expect from a certain star, we might be able to find planets much easier and also much quicker. For now though, this is a very interesting discovery, definitely a star system that we kind of didn't expect to find and also a star system that just seems extremely different from the solar system despite the similarity with the sun. But until future studies, that's unfortunately all we know about the star system and about these residences. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't and maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find it in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.